Good morning, Bears, and welcome back to a regular week of Kickin' It. A special thanks to Ben Rucker for helping with our new intro. Coming up on the show, we connect with one of our student activists, check in with head girls lacrosse coach, explore summer job opportunities, and look at recent student travel experiences. Ju juniors and seniors, prom is Saturday, April 21st at the Columbus Convention Center. The link to buy tickets is on Schoology. Tickets are $70 per person and are on sale through Sunday, April 15th. See Mr. Best... Mr. Reinhardt or Mrs. Smith with questions. Seniors interested in performing at graduation. Auditions will be held April 23rd at 3.15 p.m. in the auditorium. Applications are available in the attendance office starting next Wednesday. During spring break, students at Upper Arlington High School extended the activism of a school walkout and walked in the local March for Our Lives that ended at the State House. Student Dylan Carlson, servant, spoke at the state event. We spoke to him about his passion for this movement. Dylan Carlson Servant is a junior who is active in the hashtag never again movement. He first brought this issue to the attention of UA students by organizing the walkout in support of Parkland victims on February 21st. Dylan talks more about how the success of 350 students at the walkout compelled him to become more involved with the movement in Central Ohio. And I saw on Facebook that they were starting this event, um, you know, for March for Our Lives in Columbus. So I reached out to them and said, hey, um, I would like to, you know, be part of the organization team and at the time they needed more people so they said yes, great, come along and um, then there I, uh, they had a, a committee called the Student Leader Committee and I was given, like I was the head of that committee. Through heading this committee, Dylan was able to speak at the State House after the march. <laughs> Ever since the first day shooting, there have been more than 3,000 gun homicides across the United States. It is time. It is time for us all to unite and dedicate ourselves to any gun violence in our communities. So I think it's really important to realize that this is not, you know, a conservative or liberal issue. Um, it's really about public health. You know, something has to be done no matter on which side of the aisle you're on something has to be done so I guess that's really that you know we need to focus that the discussion here is not about the Second Amendment or not the Second Amendment it's about public health and making sure that we can you know reduce gun violence in America. This has been Zenobia Chris and Sydney Lowe reporting for WARL. Dylan helped to pi pioneer the Students for Change Club here at UA. If you're interested in getting involved, the club meets in the Active Learning Lab on Mondays after school and is currently planning the walkout scheduled for April 20th at 10 a.m. The purpose of this walkout is to give a voice to high schoolers who are affected by this issue but do not have the right to vote on it. Recently, Upper Arlington City Council appealed to state legislators to restrict gun laws as a public health measure in response to recent safety threats nationwide. And now to Izzy and Madeline with sports. Welcome back to sports. On Tuesday, This Week News interviewed our baseball bears and Coach Marker on their plans for the season and changes they hope to make for this year. The baseball bears went 4-2 overall and 0-1 and in the OCC Central Division before playing Central Crossing. The bears averaged 4.8 runs in the first five games, beating Hilliard Darby, Mount Vernon, Tri-Valley, and Westchester. The Baseball Bears lost to defending state champions Maslin Jackson 3-2. When interviewed, Coach Marker remarked, Arteca's coaches is the field is their playground. Let them play. The track and field team has their first varsity invitational tonight at Hilliard Derby at 4.30. On January 12th, girls lacrosse coach Miss Wendy Pinta received the National Coach of the Year Award for girls lacrosse. She shares her hopes for the team and this season and her coaching style. I received a nomination form from um, the National Federation asking me um, a whole host of questions from my um, career record to um, major accomplishments within the sport and then based on that submission they picked um, I believe it was 16 coaches um, to represent um, coaches of the year. I can't ask for better players. Uh, play these players are 
um, and the team has historically been incredibly committed, um, selfless players, um, a joy to coach, they're, they're fun, um, they're smart, um, but mostly it's their commitment and um, their dedication. Uh, our goals are to always to improve. Um, you know, we, we have a saying, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. Um, and so while this is an incredibly talented team, what I want to see them do is get even better. This has been Isabel Robeson and Madeline Nichols reporting for WARL. You can come out to the Marv tomorrow at 1 to see the Lady, Bear, Lady Lacrosse Bears play Olin G. Liberty in their home opener. The girls are currently 2-0 and chasing after their fourth straight state championship. UA grad Kevin Venata, who led UA to the Division I championship game in 2014, just finished his basketball career at UNC Asheville. Venata finished with a program record of 4,165 minutes and tied the team record for games played with 130 games. The boys volleyball team won in four sets last night against Kaufman and are currently ranked fourth in Ohio. They have a Chipotle fundraiser next Tuesday from 5 to 9 p.m. Boys Tennis has a match today against Cincinnati Country Day at 4. Now to Kate and Nick at Lifestyle. The 65th annual April Fool's Pancake Breakfast takes place this Saturday from 8 to 11 a.m. at Tremont Center. The event is free of charge. Recently, many restaurants have announced their expansion into the Central Ohio area. The owners of Grandview's La Tavola will be opening a new restaurant in UA called Lupo. This, re this Spanish-Italian joint is set to open on the Arlington Avenue Mallway on April 10th. Alchemy, a popular smoothie and juice bar, will be opening a new location on Grandview Avenue. The Zest Competitor has a menu that features smoothie bowls for only $7 and will open this month. Construction is underway on a second Brassica location. The fast casual Mediterranean restaurant will be located in the area next to Speedway on Lane Avenue. An official opening date has not yet been released. On April 3rd, Catalina's announced they are opening a Clintonville location late this year. The menu will feature the same famous pancake balls as well as some new additions. Harvest Pizzeria announced they are adding locations in Grandview Heights and Bexley this, this summer. With all these new restaurants opening and warm weather approaching, many students are on the lookout for a summer job. Nick and I found more insight. The job board is located in the main hallway outside the cafeteria. On it, you will find postings for various careers such as those in food and recreation. We asked students at the high school who work to give us insight into their places of employment. I work at Northwest Swim Club. I'm a safety monitor, so I'm not technically a lifeguard, so I don't have to get like all of the certification and everything and go through the class. I pretty much sit in a chair at the top of the slide tell kids to go down. We lost a lot of safety monitors, so we're gonna need more. So if you wanna apply, apply to Northwest Swim Club. <laughs> So I work at the golf club in New Albany, Ohio, and I uh, caddy. I would say that if you guys are looking for some sort of job, uh, Scioto Country Club's a really good country club to uh, caddy at, and also I, like the golf club's really nice. I know they're always looking for caddies, so if you, uh, you want to go out there and walk some golf courses, it is a good time commitment, but uh, it's good money and it's a good time. For WARL, this has been Nick Biziano and Kate Gomez. The job board is a great resource to check if you are interested in working this summer. Sunday night, 70s rock band The Eagles are performing at Nationwide Arena. Tickets are still available on Ticketmaster. Indie rock band Twin Peaks is playing tonight at 7 p.m. at the Newport. Tickets are $18 before processing. John Deschler is covering the concert for UA Live. If you're interested, make sure to check out the highlights on Kickin' It's YouTube channel. The UA Film Festival is on April 29th. Upload submissions to Google Drive and share them with both mhaines at uaschools.org and afountain at uaschools.org by Monday, April 23rd. Expect more details to come soon. Now back to Zenobia and Sydney at Maine. The new athletic field renovations at Northam Park are slated to kick off when spring sports end, starting with the, repairing the drainage system on the current athletic fields. The hope is to allow kids to go home earlier and not have to wait for turf space while the new high school is under construction. The fields are on track to be ready for use in the spring of 2019. Last Wednesday, 12-year-old Peter Lombardi, a 5th grade student at St. Andrews, met Pope Francis on a trip to the Vatican. Peter was able to achieve his lifetime dream when he rode in the Pope Mobile, taking a tour of St. Peter's Square with Pope Francis himself. Meeting the Pope was one of his dreams while battling leukemia. Peter is a 5th grade student at St. Andrews School and has been in remission since June 2017. Over spring break and spilling into the week after, students had multiple travel experiences from New York all the way to Ecuador. The first trip was to the Galapagos Islands. After visiting Ecuador and the Intan Museum, 
which showcases equator-related exhibits, students toured Quito. Students then visited Isabella Island, where they went snorkeling and hiked volcanoes. They had the chance to visit Santa Cruz Island, where the Charles Darwin Research Station is located. Alongside local activities, students got to see tortoises, flamingos, otters, and other animals in their natural habitats. The second was a broadcasting trip to New York City the week after spring break. Students were able to view live with Kelly and Ryan as well as The View as part of the media experience. They were able to visit a New York Knicks basketball game and the Broadway protection of Kinky Boots. Students also had the opportunity to visit Times Square and the Brooklyn Bridge, as well as seeing classical artworks in the Museum of Modern Art. If you're interested in upcoming EF tour trips, contact Ms. Ballheim and see what next year has to offer. Students, if you love to dance, Hip Hop Club is having a student showcase in May and is in need of many performers. If you're interested, a form will be posted on SchoolG and more information on how to get involved. Next Friday, we will look at prom, student section, and a female and female athletes breaking barriers. And remember, today, April the 6th, is National Student Athlete Day, so stay grinding, Bears.